Hi everyone, this is Derek from the OSTIF and today we're going to talk about full disk encryption using VeraCrypt. To complete this guide, you're going to need a blank DVD and a system with the operating system that you want to encrypt already installed. And of course, the VeraCrypt application installed. You can see here that I've opened up VeraCrypt and I'm selecting the option to encrypt the entire file system. Um, in this example, we're not doing a hidden file system. That's a more advanced video for the future. When it asks you about whether you want to encrypt the host protected area, generally you want to say yes to this because then it's going to encrypt any additional data that your operating system may be storing for whatever reason. The only exception is if you have a RAID array of some kind installed, it usually has a separate partition so it can manage that RAID array and it will break your RAID array if you encrypt that data. Next you'll want to select the option for single boot and in the next screen you can select your encryption options. There's multiple algorithms that you can select and VeraCrypt also supports using nested ciphers which is layering multiple different types of encryption on top of each other. This is so that if there's a weakness in one of these types of encryption then whoever your attacker is will still have to get through other very different types of encryption in order to get to your data. I have selected the option for AES, Two Fish, and Serpent, which in this version of VeraCrypt, I believe, is the strongest setting that you can select. Um, in the near future, VeraCrypt is implementing more ciphers that you'll be able to select from, and we will probably um, advise you differently on which ones to select. Next we have to select a password for our secure volume and we want this password to be as complicated as possible so don't use counting or birthdays or anything about you that would make it very easy to guess if you're really into cars don't use your favorite car brand things like that. Um, you want it to be a combination of letters and numbers capitalize some of them don't make it easy. This is the step that makes your VeraCrypt partition either very strong or very weak. Next, VeraCrypt needs to build a pool of random data and among other things, it uses your mouse movements within this window in order to build random data in order to generate your keys. So you need to move your mouse around as randomly as possible and you want to keep doing it until that bar is completely full. This step adds a substantial amount of entropy to your VeraCrypt encryption. And entropy, randomness, is what makes this encryption work. Next we're going to create our VeraCrypt rescue disk. This disk is so that if anything blows up and VeraCrypt stops working or Windows stops working well with VeraCrypt for whatever reason, you can use this disk to completely decrypt everything and recover all of your data. You will still need your password in order to be able to decrypt this data. It is not a cure-all. So do not, under any circumstances, lose your password because you will lose complete access to your computer and it will be unrecoverable. So once you've gone through the process of burning your emergency recovery disk, um, you'll get a success message and you should physically have a DVD with that information on it in your possession. Um, store that away somewhere where it's going to be easy to find. You should never have to use it, but if you do need it, it's very, very valuable. VeraCrypt is going to want to verify that the disk has been burned, so it will tell you to eject and reinsert the disk in order to allow it to read the disk and verify that you have all of your recovery information on there. Next, VeraCrypt is going to want you to select your erase options, and depending on which one you select, this is going to take a very long time because it physically erases the disk and replaces it with random encrypted data and this is to prevent any attempts at recovery of whatever original data was on this disk before you encrypted it. 
you can see here that I've selected the three pass option and that took about six hours to complete on an old 250 gigabyte hard drive. So if you extrapolate that out, it would be a very long time in a modern two or even four terabyte hard drive. And frankly, it is overkill to do this unless you're doing some Mr. Robot level activity on your computer, in which case uh, you probably shouldn't be watching this guide. You should know what you're doing already. Veracrypt is going to want to do a test in order to make sure that everything is compatible and that Veracrypt is working before it erases and overwrites all of your data with encrypted data. This is to prevent data loss if something is incompatible with Veracrypt. It will ask you to reboot during this process and you'll have to enter the password that you created earlier for your partition. So here we've rebooted our computer and this screen comes up before Windows even loads. This is where you enter your Veracrypt password in order to unlock your new fully encrypted hard drive. We never created a PIN, so we can just leave that blank and hit enter. Now Veracrypt is going to verify the credentials that you've entered and it goes through a series of tests to make sure that your data is being properly decrypted. Uh, this process can take up to a few minutes depending on the speed of your computer and the size of the partition that it's looking at. Um, the only slowdowns that you get while using this process are usually at boot up here and then it's not noticeable for the rest of your session. Once the testing process finishes, you can see that Veracrypt is properly decrypting your data and now we are loading into Windows. Veracrypt will notify you that the test was successful and that it can proceed with migrating all of your data from your old unencrypted disk to your new fully encrypted disk. Here is also where Veracrypt is going to carry out whatever erase options that you have selected. Here we can see that the process has finished and we are now in Windows in a fully encrypted partition. You can now work with this partition normally and the only step that is different is entering your password when you turn your computer on. Next I'm going to show one last time what it looks like when you restart your computer and have to enter your Veracrypt credentials. And that's all for today. If this has helped some of you, I strongly encourage you to visit us at ostif.org and see what we've been working on. We are doing these guides to help show you how to use software, but we are also doing a lot of work in the background to make this software stronger and easier to use. Any contribution that you can make, whether it's financially or whether you want to volunteer and help us work with some of our projects is so greatly appreciated. So hopefully we will hear from some of you guys. Thank you very much.